when you understand the things of God then you begin to see a lot of profit when you understand the word what it means to you as a believer and to a church in general you begin to benefit when you don't know you perish anything that dominates the thought of a man you get it so meaning that you need to have the right thought about something but when you seek his government first his rule first his interest first we can know the interest of God from the written word we can know what he's putting first you're welcome for this morning service welcome your neighbor for me Hallelujah. Our topic today is unity. Unity. If you looked around, just look behind you if you're in front. If you're, if you're behind, look in front and see. Do you see the colors of the clothing? The styles of the hair? Huh? The suitings, the shoes? Are they the same? But where are we? We are in one place, not so? Yes. Hallelujah. So it is this place that has brought us all together here. Which means this place has united us. Amen? Do you believe that? It's just a state of being one. If someone stepped in here, he will say, I found the children of God in a certain room. Hallelujah. Amen. Called church. Hallelujah. Amen. Children of God in a certain room called church. Even if Satan was seated somewhere, he will also be called a child of God. Hallelujah. That's the beauty of unity. It brings different people together. I want to bring to our attention that unity is a principle that operates in the natural and in the spiritual and in the physical. I want to give us an illustration which is, which is outside Christ. Let's go to Genesis 11 verses 1 to 9. It reads, Now the world had one language and a common, a common speech. As men moved eastwards, they found a plain in Shina and settled there. They say to each other, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heaven, so that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the men were building. The Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let's go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the years and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. For there the Lord scattered them over the faith of the whole earth. The people were in one language, in one accord, which means they were in unity. What was uniting them was the language, and they took a plan. And even God was scared that what these people have taken up, it will not be impossible for them to achieve it. So when there is unity, whether it is doing what is wrong, or doing what is good, it will always succeed. Have you concluded that? Whether, where there is unity, it will always succeed. Whether for good or for bad. That's why God was like lamenting that these people have started something and they're in one language. They're in unity. They're in one accord. What they have started to do, they will succeed in it they will succeed in it. 
and he said let's go down let's go down even the heavenly council had to be united had to come in unity to scatter this earthly council hallelujah do you see unity in heaven unity on the earth unity is a principle that operates even in heaven on earth and it is natural hallelujah glory be to god i wanted to bring to your idea that it is not about christ only but in christ it is more powerful unity is more powerful uh, paul gives us an illustration in first corinthians chapter 12 verses 12 to 20 for us the body is one and has many members and all the members of that one body being many are one body so also is christ hallelujah continue for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body whether we be jews or gentiles whether we be born or free and have been all made to drink into one spirit for the body is not one member but many if the food shall say because i am not the hand i am not of the body is it therefore not of the body if the ear shall say because i am not the eye i am not of the body is it therefore not of the body if the whole body were one were an eye where were where were the hearing if the whole were hearing where were the smelling but now hath god set the members every one of them in the body as it hath pleased him and if they were all one member where were the body but now are they many members yet but one body hallelujah Amen. paul is illustrating using a common example of a body you have i have and paul says the eye is a member in the body the ear is a member in the body the nose is a member in the body the hand is a member in the body the leg is a member in the body think about it think about it look at their cooperation they are very cooperative and the mind is their center the eye says i have seen something good and the hand say can we pick it yes we better pick it and the leg say i will carry you we go hallelujah you see that coordination but in christ we are also expected to be parts of christ so ask yourself what am i in christ am i the leg am i the eye am i the ear you must be one of those parts in christ do you know which part you are ask god to show you ask the holy spirit to show you ask him which part of christ am i which part of the body am i in christ in it all christ is the unifying factor hallelujah Amen. so when you look at yourself please whether you are insignificant in your own eyes but before god you're very significant and very important hallelujah you are very important look at yourself eh? just tell yourself i am special i am important in the body of christ i belong to christ hallelujah know that you belong to christ and you're very important and you're special hallelujah if you imagine your body just imagine your body when i'm dressed like this there are parts in the body that are for exposure others are hidden the parts that are seen are not more special than the parts that are not seen they are equally important and they need each other at a particular time at a particular moment some part of the body 
is playing its part. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All this we know. Hallelujah. Amen. So, but in the body of Christ, it takes you and me to be very intentional to play your part in Christ. It takes intention. You have to be intentional in playing your part. Now that you know who you are in Christ, and if you don't know, you must know who you are in Christ. And you intentionally play your part in Christ. It also takes commitment. Commitment. In a, in a human body, God just made his knitting there so that those parts are together. Look at the knitting in your hand. God put a, a different color here and then a different behind here. But it's the same hand. Hallelujah. When you look at your fingers, he put a knitting that the nails are different from the skin that covers them. They just come out a little bit and show that we are here. And when they're about to pass the end of your finger, they again change color. That is God's knitting for the body. Hallelujah. Look at the clothes you're wearing. They have, they have multicolors. That is the same knowledge. Somebody put there and say, if I put this thread here, blue, and then crisscross it with the red, eh? do you see the beauty that comes out? In the fabrics, so God fabricated you and me in his own style that when you appear they say what a beautiful lady. What a handsome man. That is all God's making. So where there is unity there will always be beauty. Hallelujah. So it also takes diligence in the body of Christ. It takes diligence. That's why you purposed that I must be there at this time. That's why you are here. You have a commitment. You are intentional. And you are diligent that I must be there. And here you are. Hallelujah. When we are united in Christ, there are things we do. Hallelujah. What are those things? When we are together in Christ, we saw the choir here. Beautifully dressed. Smartly dressed. Did you see what they were doing? They were praising God. And all of us joined them. They were worshipping God. We all joined them. Hallelujah. You see the beauty of unity? Look at those voices that were coming. How many voices were they using? I hear there is soprano. There is alto. There is tenor. And then there is bass. When put together, the harmony that comes in there, hallelujah. You just, you just feel the music is sweet, though you have not tasted it with your tongue. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Those are some of the beauties of unity. Look at the instruments. If you, have never, if you had never seen those things, and then you, then you come across them, and then they told you, music can come out of there. Then you touch one and then gives you a sound, boom. Say, what music will come from here? When you pull a string, you say, ting. But when they organize them and put them together, when one sounds, it sounds as noise. But when all of them sound, they get organized in such a way that they produce music because they are united. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's see the unity in prayer. Unity in prayer gives us the patience to wait for God's visitation. Go to Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. 
they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. You've heard this. When Jesus was ascending to heaven, he told the disciples that do not scatter. Go and wait in Jerusalem. And they purposely, intentionally, went to the upper room. And what were they doing there? They were praying. They were praying and fasting. Patiently waiting. And lo and behold, what came upon them? A heavenly visitation of the Holy Spirit. The promise of the Father. Each one of you, each one of us, has a promise. Not one. Promises. But how often have you been in that waiting. Even when we are here. Someone is going to receive a visitation. Amen. Someone is going to receive a visitation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just be expectant. Give him praise. Give him praise. <laughs> Give him praise. So whenever we gather. In unity. In one accord. In one language. There will always be a visitation. Sometimes you may not realize that you have been visited. If I asked and said, each one of us must give a testimony. Is there someone among us who doesn't have a testimony? If you create testimonies, it's when you think you don't have a testimony. If somebody talked about a house or miracle money, you say, I don't have a testimony. You have a testimony. Hallelujah. The very first testimony we all have is waking up from bed. If you listen to the radio today, there is somebody who didn't wake up. If there is opportunity to announce, but there are many who will never be announced, and you will not know how many people never woke up this morning to see the sun. Hallelujah. Amen. So, one, of the, one, one testimony that is for all of us is we slept. We woke up. Because he sustained us. Hallelujah. My second point, what unity brings, unity in Christ brings to us as believers, it gives us boldness in evangelism. And it takes unity in prayer. Acts chapter 2 verses 14. Then Peter stood up with the 11. Do you see unity there? He stood up with the eleven. Which means the eleven were there around him. Raised his voice and addressed the crowds. Fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem. Let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. If you've been reading your Bible. If you've been reading your Bible. You'll realize that it was after prayer together in the upper room that there was a heavenly visitation that they patiently waited for. And when they came out, Peter was very bold. Remember when he said, I don't know that man? When a certain young lady said, this man here looks like a Galilean. He, he was with Jesus of Nazareth. They said, I don't know that man. Maybe your head is not working. Are your eyes really working? It is sure that Peter was a coward at that point. He admitted it. And Jesus said, before cock crow, you will have denied me three times. He was like, <laughs> when the cock now crowed, he remembered, oh, this is what the man said. Truly. He had already done it. Denied him three times. Denied him three times. He was like, now these people are going to kill this man. Me, I want to put aside. That is being coward. Eh? So Peter was a coward. But after this encounter of being together and standing together, addressing people who were calling them drunk, he stood boldly and told them, men of Jerusalem, 
Let me tell you the thing now. So boldness comes in if we are together united in Christ. And we can do things that our bodies, eh, without, without unity, we cannot do. Eh? There is a common saying that unity is strength. Hallelujah. Do you, do, you've heard that? You've experimented it? You've seen it work? Unity is strength. Just naturally. Unity is strength. Hallelujah. That's why I was saying it is a principle that can operate in the natural, in the spiritual, and even the physical. Go to Acts, uh, same chapter, verses 37 to 38. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? You can imagine, those are the people who could have heard Jesus speaking. They could have seen miracles. But they were still hard-hearted. Now it became a point that Jesus is, no, is, is not there. But his presence inside Peter and the group. And Peter boldly stood and spoke. And they, and they began asking, what do we do now? What do we do now? Because there is no way of escape. Continue. Peter replied, repent and be baptized. Every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Have you ever tried evangelism as one person? Walk to a place they don't know you and you try evangelism as one person. Even Jesus understood it. That's why he sent them two by two. The power of unity. Two by two. As you're speaking, eh, the other person is interceding. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let me give you a testimony. We went somewhere. In Chisoga, those ends of Mukono, deep there near the lake. I was with three ladies. So we visited a home. It had rained. And we were going to see a child who had been operated, had some, some complications in the excretion. Eh? So they just put a hole here. So that the, the excreta comes out and into a bag. That type of medication. So when we reached, they gave us direction that this is the place. I was driving. I turned the wheels and the tires were now facing this other side to branch. The car continued past the path that was going to that house. One lady said, what is happening? She looked around and saw certain funny plants in the compound. It was an old Mabati house, square. And then there were smaller, smaller houses, like this height, eh? around that Mabati house. And she said, something is happening here. So we continued uphill and said, let's go and turn from there. Then we come back and branch in. So we moved past I turned the car. We came back. Now we are going to turn the other side to enter the compound. With the tires turned to get in, the car still continued past the path. One lady said, there is resistance here. There is opposition here. Now, let's not disturb ourselves to enter that house or that home with this car. We are getting out. You remain in the car and intercede for us. Hallelujah. I was interceding in the car and they walked on foot. Some 30 meters. And they were welcomed. Lo and behold, what did they see? Shrines. And their evangelism began. Hallelujah. Thank God. The father to, the, to, this, to this boy gave his life to Christ. <laughs> now they looked at each other. The grandmother also was there. She was overwhelmed by the power of God. 
she also gave her life to Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And they begin spilling out beans. You see those things out there? Those are shrines. Each one of us has a shrine there. Those, things, those small, small huts you see out. That's where we go and worship. But from today onwards, we have seen that God is able and is powerful. Hallelujah. So they were inside the house evangelizing. Mia was outside in the car interceding. Hallelujah. The power of unity. So even when we are doing evangelism, there should be someone standing, backing us up. One, two, three. For the case of Peter, there were 11. Hallelujah. There were 11 standing with him as he was evangelizing. Another point we want to look at. Unity in Christ gives us the power to witness Christ. Let's go to Acts chapter 4 verse 33. With the great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And much grace was upon them all. Hallelujah. The power of unity. There is power in unity. And there is grace in unity in Christ. They witnessed. When you are a witness, you must have seen it with your eye. You must have heard it exactly from who? Eh? That is witness. But we are expected to witness Christ. Did any of us see Christ? Has anybody seen that empty tomb? Now you ask yourself, how do I begin witnessing things I didn't see? You didn't hear directly from Christ when he was speaking. But we have the written word. Hallelujah. What gives a witness in that? As you talk, because you believe in the word, the Lord will work with you. The Lord will work with you and produce that evidence. Hallelujah. And the hearers and the onlookers will see the evidence with you. Hallelujah. Another point. In unity in Christ, after praying, asking God, speaking his word, people will gladly come to Christ. People will gladly come to Christ. Let's look at Acts chapter 2 verses, let's begin from 37. Acts chapter 2 verses 37, then we jump to 41, then to 46. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Go to 41. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Go to 46. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with the glad and sincere hearts. Do you see where gladness comes in? The power of unity. People will gladly accept Christ. Because we are united. We are united in prayer. We are united in fasting. We are united in love. Hallelujah. There are people who have come to Christ. Not because somebody spoke to them. They watched somebody's life. They watched this person's life. And where they go for fellowship. And how they fellowship together. And how they conduct themselves. And the question comes, what makes you behave like that? When things are turbulent, you are calm. When everybody is panicking, you are just settled. When everybody is lamenting, you are just saying, thank you, Jesus. How many times do you mention that, that sentence? In a day, how many times do you mention, thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Lord. Because you know you have an anchor that is unshakable. Your anchor in Christ Jesus cannot be moved. Whether storms rage like what, you'll always remain. You'll always remain established. Because he is the rock. You built your foundation on that rock. Nothing can shake you. So when we conduct ourselves... 
according to the laws of our kingdom, we are established. And people look at us and admire. You will not hear a comment like, I thought you were a Christian. I thought. Because they are trying to see you are not exhibiting the Christ-likeness that the world expects. You know the world expects from us to be Christ-like. That's why they test you. If you have cleaned your veranda, somebody comes and pours trash there. They want to see how you react. And when you come out calmly and say, hey, I've just cleaned this place. Let me redo it. Then they say, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Just forgive me. Sorry. I am sorry. I am sorry. Eh? Because you acted in a way that is Christ-like, that is exhibiting love, the person gets embarrassed and begins saying sorry. Do you see that? But if you came out and said, who is this fool here? You have kindled a matchstick. You call me a fool? Do you know where I come from? Are you the one who brought me to this city? I will show you. Eh? You see? You see what it costs. Do you see how, how calmness and love can get you out of trouble that the devil throws across? It comes like a hook. And when you grab it, you'll be caught. If you act in love and say, oh, or even be by saying, sorry, you could have just stumbled here. Let me, let me clean this place. I want it clean. Hallelujah. So Christ-likeness should be exhibited in us as we are called the Christians. But let it not be limited to you to be a Christian. Just like Christ. Let it be evident that you are a child of God. Let it be a child of God. So that people can look at you and gladly come and say, but where do you get all this knowledge that makes you behave like this? Where do you get this heart? And you say, this is the heart of Christ. Where do you get this mind? This is the mind of Christ. That makes me behave like this. Different from other people. Hallelujah. You exhibit the kingdom culture. Hallelujah. Because you belong to a kingdom. The heavenly kingdom. That's why you, probably, you can probably say, my name is in the books of life. In the books of remembrance. Hallelujah. Unity in Christ gives us those evidences of wonders, signs, and miracles. That's an, an next point. Acts chapter 2 verses 43. NIV reads, Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. By the apostles. You see, it is plural there. But fall back what, what would they be doing? There is unity in prayer. Prayer and fasting. They gladly break the bread, the, 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 the bread together. Yeah? So there will be signs and miracles. Giving evidence of the person you are witnessing. Just like Peter was saying in a certain scripture. That the man you crucified. In the name of that man you crucified. The king of life. Is whereby you see this man who was crippled. You knew him for many years. Crippled laying here. You would bypass him and you throw your coin there. But today, that man whom you crucified, it is in his name. In his name. That this man is walking as you see. Hallelujah. That is evidence that Jesus Christ is resurrected. That is one of the evidences. Much as you not be able to go to Jerusalem and look at that tomb, that empty tomb, the evidence is, in his names, things are changing. Hallelujah. May God change your state. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The other point, that's brought about by unity. Jesus told this. In uh, Matthew chapter 18, 
verses 19 to 20. Unity is an earthly agreement in Christ. An earthly agreement between two or three, eh? even two, that attracts God's presence and intervention. Matthew 18, 19 tells us, Again, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. Hallelujah. An agreement on earth here. Two of you. You agree on something. According to his will. It will be done. You might get scared that ha, will, will the Father really give us this thing here? And if you agree, if one is like doubting, it will not happen. You must first of all agree in one spirit, in one accord, in one language. And then ask the Father in agreement. Hallelujah. Have you been doing that? You try. Do you have prayer partners? If you don't have a prayer partner, please get one. It is important to have a prayer partner. Look at that scripture. Again, I tell you that if two of you united on earth, you will affect heaven. Two of you. For anything. For anything. Father in heaven will do it. Get a prayer partner. Some of you could be having testimonies about that. Even the Bible instructs. He says, when you are one, you can chase a thousand demons. But if you are two, you chase ten thousand. Look at that ratio. How about when you are three? Maybe you are 100,000. So the power of unity in agreement eh? on earth here attracts God's presence and intervention. God will intervene. He says again, where two or more are gathered in my name, I am just right there in their midst. Hallelujah. But it begins from uniting the two. The two. It is powerful. Even in the natural it is still powerful. So, take it that unity is a spiritual principle. For us who are in Christ, even those ones outside Christ. So from today, find a prayer partner. That is the person whom you confide in. You will tell them all. Eh? They say you pull yourself inside out. So that when you're praying, you're praying with empathy. If you have a prayer partner and you have this challenge here, your prayer partner will put on those shoes, however big they will be. Will you put he, he, her, herself or himself in your position and intercede and you pray and petition heaven with you together. And truly and surely, you will see better results. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just as the scripture has told us, that if two of you on earth agree on one thing, in some version say, touching it, Father in heaven will grant. Another point, what do unity brings to us? Unity in Christ terminates lack among the believers. Acts chapter 4 verse 32 All the believers were one in heart and mind. Check that. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they shared everything they had. There were no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned lands or houses sold them brought the money from the sales, 35, and put it at the apostle's feet, and it was distributed to anyone 
as he had need. A very good example is the women, they call it what? Go round. Is it Mary go round or something like that? How do they? Hey. Aha. Uh -huh. They are united. You can imagine. Even in the villages there. You can imagine. Do they pray or sometimes not? For you here, I know you pray. But with them, they say, hey, have you brought the money? Hey, today we are contributing how much? 5,000 each. Okay. Whose turn is it to receive? So and so. So what is your need? We know where to get those things at a cheaper price. I was told in a certain village, the women looked around and said, mm -mm, this is a new generation. We are not going to continue eating on plastic plates which keep the smell of last week's fish. We are upgrading. We are now going to break balls. So, but the children, no, don't mind about the children. Let's put the things in our houses, even glasses. These plastic cups here, these plastic plates here, they change the color. You find it's green, and then inside there, it has become brown. You imagine what makes it brown. The, the cooking chemicals make it brown. And when you're picking the delicious meal, and then at the bottom there, you see, hey, what has made this blue plate brown now? So these people said we're upgrading ourselves. So I want to imagine in that group, every home had breakable plates, had glasses, and when you would visit, say, may I have a drink? Then you see a glass being brought, say, ah. But for us, when we're growing up, we had calabashes. Any of you know as a calabash? Eh, in the Acholi land, they call it Awalo. So unity in Christ, with that same mind, eh? we can eliminate lack in our midst. In such a simple way, contributing 3,000 over a period of time. I want to believe the women group, they have prospered in a way. Am I right? There is some prosperity there. If in your wallet now, after the breakfast and the lunch budget, there is 2,000 remaining, I'm telling you, you are rich. Hallelujah. And you can begin saving that money. Because you have catered for the lunch, the breakfast, eh, and the dinner. And there is a balance of 2,000. You can begin saving that money. Hallelujah. One man was in Kampala here and met me in, that, in my village. And was talking about Kampala and said, in Kampala, if you can afford to go to sleep and your stomach is satisfied and there is a balance of some money in your pocket for tomorrow morning, you will not worry in Kampala. But if you ate everything and then tomorrow morning you are like, well, how do I begin to get Katogo? You will worry a lot. You will worry a lot. Hallelujah. But unity in Christ will, will, will terminate that. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Jehovah God, our Father, King of glory, we are here gathered as your children, just as your word says that those who accepted, who received him, he gave them the right to become the children of God, even to those who believed. Thank you for your word for today, that it will be established in our hearts, just as it is established in heaven, that it will bear fruit, fruit that will glorify your name, fruit that will exhibit and prove the evidence that Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead. Father, we thank you for your people. Blessed did they come here. Blessed shall they go. Father, change somebody's story with your word. 